how awful is he and why? <laughs> I, was asked, I was asked this on the radio the other day, and I sadly have always given the same answer regularly. Mm. I've been working with Robert now since 1989, and I meet a few people who have obviously been scarred in the past. And they look at me and they say, how have you survived? How can you work with Robert for all those years? Because he is so awful, or whatever phrase they use. And I always give the same answer, I'm afraid, which is that I have never met that man. Perhaps I'm fortunate. Somehow um, uh, we have a relationship that has worked and has endured ever since 1989. Um, it began... When we first worked on The Great Deceiver, I knew nothing about King Crimson, literally beyond probably the very first album. That was my entire knowledge of King Crimson. I stood in at short notice on a guitar craft tour, then came into the studio, did Sunday all over the world, frame by frame. Then The Great Deceiver, we were in the studio, and Robert came in, I think, and said, these are all big old wheels of tape. And fast forward the tape to Larks 2, and we'll mix Larks 2. And I recall saying, and how will I know it when I get there? <laughs> I had, I'd never heard the pieces before. And uh, we were working in Tony Arnold's studio, which w regularly went wrong. Um, but uh, there was a mix. Robert w went away, said, I'll come back in half an hour, and we'll run the mix. I wasn't ready with the mix when Robert came back. And I said to Robert, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not ready yet. I need another quarter of an hour. And Tony said in horror, oh, don't say that to Robert. Tell him the studio, something went wrong or the studio, don't, don't say it's your fault and you're not ready. And I said, well, if Robert can't put up that with that, this relationship isn't going to last very long, is it? <laughs> so he isn't that awful man, is he? I mean, there we are, that's all. Perhaps I, he... I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> don't be awful. <laughs> well... Seeking popularity, in my view, is a personal weakness. This is, I, it, may have, it may have been noticed by some of you that I do not actually seek personal popularity to any great extent. Uh, I've noticed that, by and large, people who approach me with demands for various autographs, photographs, the endlessness of it all, selfies. <sighs> if I say no, I am a terrible person. Mm. The question would then be, what are the reasons for doing this? What are the reasons for not doing this? The cataphatic and the ataphatic approach. For those of you who've ever waded into theology. Ah. Now, in terms of King Crimson and popularity and unpopularity, for me, in King Crimson, the music comes first. Is that reasonable? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. So what do you do with a musician who believes they're more important than the music? Find a new one. What do you do? Mm -hmm. This is a question for me. This is one I dealt with for decades. Supposing a person feels that it's all about me, or I come first, there are likely to be personal problems between that member of King Crimson and Robert. And these are two clues on the history of the turbulent personal relationships within King Crimson. Mm. Thank you, sir. There is a gentleman behind you now. Actually, be before the next question, following on again from The Awful Man, there is a wonderful quote from Jeremy Stacy in the movie when he says, by roughly, I love having a major hard ass making the music as good as it can possibly be. That man I do know. If you interpret that as being an awful man, that's different, but that's exactly what Jeremy said when someone asked him what it's like working with Robert. I'm very happy having a hard ass who will, who will make the music as good as it can possibly be.